Tony D and Little Joan, a screenwriter's take on X, starring Mia Goth as a porn star who's trying to break into the movie industry. Uh, and while she's shooting one of her pornos out in some crazy farm, uh, horrible murders happen. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. The links are in the description. Comedy Heart in South Jersey. It's the Pineys. Books 1 through 16. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. So, this is a kind of hot movie. The shocking thing for me was uh, Jenna Ortega was in it. I didn't, I didn't remember her being in it. I guess that was before she was famous. But, um, yeah, she plays a big role in this. Um, but uh, I'll give you my non-spoiler review first. There she is. And then my spoiler review. There's uh, Mia Goth. There she is again. So, the non-spoiler review is, it's a pretty uh, high-end slasher movie. And um, it's made in the classic way. Boobies are in it. <laughs> lots of people have sex. And then lots of people get killed. And then one brave, stunning woman uh, manages to turn the tails on her attackers. And uh, so... That's about all I can say about it without giving too much away. Um, it's got interesting characters and a decent story. It really reminded me of something that was made in the 70s. And it takes place in 1979, so that was interesting. Um, you know, nobody in the movie seemed to care about pants or, uh, you know, uh, germs. Uh, so it, it took me back. It took me back to an era that I uh, lived in. Um, so, yeah, it was okay. I was I, I don't generally like slasher movies, but this one was okay. I, I found it entertaining enough to sit through. There was a couple of moments I was like, ah, eh, it's a little slow in the beginning. Um, and it got a little gory, and I was just like, oh, you know. But um, it was interesting to me because I already knew about the other two movies in this trilogy. In fact, I'm going to review Maxine, the third movie, in another video, but that's going to be on the other channels. The green site, the orange site, and the uh, black site. The links are below if you want to go see the review of Maxine. Uh, but generally, I liked it. Eh, it was worth watching. Some good boobies. And uh, some interesting characters who get terribly murdered. Um, and, uh, a fairly satisfying end. Fairly satisfying. Um, it all sort of jibes with the other movies, so. Ty West is sort of a meat and potatoes filmmaker, uh, and he wrote and directed this. He is not trying to be too clever, if you know what I mean. He's fairly direct, you know, a lot of these slasher movies, you think you know who the killer is, and then there's a big twist at the end. Like, he didn't need to do that, so he didn't do it. You know, there's not a lot of twists and turns in here. Kind of once it gets going, it gets going. And, you know, you're going to see a bunch of gore and you're going to see some people scream and get killed. And, you know, it's it, if you like that, it's great. I can only tolerate it at times. And really... The boobies sort of get me through it. I'm like, oh, I'm watching some boobies. Okay, all right. Oh, another murder. Oh, I don't know if I want to watch it. Oh, more boobies. Okay, all right. I'll watch it. Oh, another murder. Ah, oh, God. So it's kind of like that for me. But um, Ty does the best he can with the material, I would say. And there's only so much you can do. And the one interesting twist in this movie is the murderers. So the murderers, without giving it away... Uh, have to have their victims in more vulnerable positions than most murderers you've seen on the big screen before, I'll say. So because of that, um, that's the only way the movie works, and it, it becomes just clever in that in that mode. All right, so that's my non-spoiler review. Uh, do I recommend it? If you like these movies, I think you'll like this. If you'd like to see a movie that was made in 2022, but 
really looks like it was made in 1979, yeah, watch this movie. All right, so the non-spoiler review. Let's get into the three-act breakdown. The first act is uh, Mia Goth and her crew of misfits going to a, a, a distant farm out in the middle of Texas to shoot a porno. And uh, they're led by a sleazy executive producer who doesn't tell the old farm couple what they're doing. And then uh, he doesn't like them. And he gives them a little extra money and kind of tries to bribe them. But the guy, he takes the money, but he doesn't, he says, I don't like you. And you can tell right away there's a lot of tension there. Um, They spend a lot of movie as setup. You know, they set up the various characters and their personalities are kind of interesting, mildly interesting. Each one has a personality. So you got the uh, black porno star. Uh, you've got the filmmaker who's making cinema, but he's really making a porn. Uh, the most interesting character probably is Jenna Ortega. Because Jenna Ortega is a hot girl who works in the crew. Now, she looks super young in this, and my first thought upon watching this was like, oh my God, how old was she in this movie? So I looked it up on the IMD. She was 20 when this was shot, so. But she is not naked in it. But she is scantily clad. I'll say that. Um, But she looks way too young to be in a porno. She looks, you know, that's one of the reasons Jenna Ortega plays Wednesday and plays high school students. She looks like a high school student. She's very petite petite and young looking. So it's even more sleazy when she decides she wants to be in the porno uh, sometime around. I think that happens in the first act. Yeah, I think the whole thing culminates. So there's a little sub-movie in that first act. And the sub-movie is Jenna Ortega as one of the crew members shooting the porno and then deciding she wants to be in the porno too because the porno guys are sitting around talking about what it's like to be in a porno and then they convince her that it's no big deal. But of course, the filmmaker is either dating Jenna Ortega or he wants to. And so when that happens, he tries to convince the executive producer, hey man, don't don't let my girl be in your porno. And the executive producer says something, and I was surprised at this dialogue. He says, listen, if you tell her no, she's going to do it. And she's probably going to do it. She's probably going to do it anyway. So at least if you go along with it, you can sort of save your relationship. Which probably isn't untrue for a woman who would, you know, think like, oh, yeah, I want to be in the porno now. I don't know why you would want to be unless you were getting some you know, a decent amount of cash, but she seems to just get caught up in the moment and say, yeah, I want to, I want to be effed on camera and you know, whatever. Uh, there's some gross moments in the movie with the porno. Uh, you see that, you see sort of the post post money shot scene where the girl wipes a bunch of bodily fluids off herself and then throws the towel aside and nearly hits Jenna Ortega. Um, but all this is, has nothing to do with what is about to happen in the second act. So the second act is where the movie really takes off as a slasher movie. Uh, It takes off when the filmmaker decides, that's it, screw these guys, I'm leaving, I'm taking my van, and let these people rot. See, See how far they get without me. And he gets in the van, and he's just about to leave. Now, during the course of the first act, Pearl, the old lady, is sort of creeping around the set. Uh, she has lemonade with Mia Goth, and um, you know the old man says, "Leave my, you know, don't disturb my wife." He keeps warning them about his wife. So when finally he uh, runs into the old lady, you kind of know that the old lady's going to do something. And I know simply because I knew about the sequel, which was really a prequel called Pearl, which is about which is played by Mia Goff, the old woman back in the past who kills a bunch of people in the past. (laughs) She's a total psychopath. So the old woman, of course, kills the film guy, and that sets off the murdering. And the old man starts killing guys because, well, he kills the black porn star, of course, because uh, I think he thinks the black porn star is either going to bang his wife or has banged his wife or might want to. 
how either that or he's just sort of jealous of him because he can still have sex and the old guy can't he thinks he can't because his heart will give out and then of course a bunch of other people die jenna jenna ortega gets locked in the basement and finds a body in the basement the, the movie just goes off the rails in the second act and during that time of course uh, mia goth is asleep for about half of it but then she wakes up and she's the only one it becomes very clear that Mia Goth is the only one that's going to get away. Um, one by one, the old couple just like murder people. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, the most shocking one, of course, probably being the alligator. Um, earlier in the movie, they established there's an alligator. It nearly gets Mia Goth, and she doesn't see it, of course. But then later, uh, the blonde girl gets kicked into the swan, uh, kicked into the water, and then boom, the alligator gets her. Uh, and that is a crazy scene. So a lot of crazy scenes in this. Um, the climactic scene, the third act, is Mia Goth, Goth trying to get the hell out of there. Um, she stops to save Jenna Ortega. Jenna Ortega doesn't listen to her, runs outside, and then blammo, she gets killed. So uh, the end of the movie is, of course, Finally, the old man and Pearl have sex on a bed, and they pan down, and then Mia Goth is underneath it. I knew she was going to be underneath that bed. So then she tries to escape, um, but she needs the keys to the van. Now, quite frankly, after I got outside and uh, realized there was no keys to the van, and the van had a flat anyway, I just would have walked the hell out of there. I mean, what else? What else are you going to do? But she goes back in to find the keys, um, and that's when she sort of gets trapped in the house after they, or she uh, saves Jenna Ortega, and that's when she gets trapped in the house when they shoot Jenna Ortega because they don't know Mia's, Mia's in there. But then there's this great moment where uh, the old man has a heart attack simply because Jenna Ortega is still alive, and she makes a noise, and it scares him, and he has a heart attack, and boom, dead. Uh, or so we think. Maybe maybe he's a lot. Maybe he could come back. I don't know. I doubt it, though. And then, of course, uh, Mia has a final confrontation with Pearl. And uh, and then uh, she takes off to Hollywood, the only survivor. So, pretty brutal mo movie. Um, I kind of enjoyed Mia Goth's character. I like the character of Maxine because she is a survivor. And she manages to uh, do all these things during the course of the movie. And it's not like they're attributing superpowers to her. It's not like they are trying to give her skills she doesn't have. She's just doing things that any normal person would do to survive if they're conscious and aware. It seems like all the other characters in the movie are too nice. They, get, they all get killed in moments when they're trying to help. They're trying to help the old lady. The old lady pushes her in the water and she gets killed by the alligator. The uh, black guy's trying to help the old man find his wife, and then he gets confronted and boom, shot in the chest. So uh, there's a bunch of scenes like that. And um, that was the challenge, I think, for Ty West, is how do you get these very elderly people to kill all these young people? Because if they know that they're killers, they're just going to overpower them, right? So Pearl had to be very smart. And so the first kill is easy, right? You know, the filmmaker's all alone. He doesn't, you know, she, he lets, him, lets her get way too close and he, she just shivs him and that's it for him. Um, and then later, same sort of thing. They use their uh, age to uh, get people to lower their guard and then boom, the old people kill him. So, yeah. And it was brutal with uh, Jenna Ortega. I mean, just brutal. She nearly gets out, and then, then the old man, like, cuts her hand. And it's it's really... Ty West does some brutal stuff in this. So this movie is not for the squeamish. Um, overall, like I said, if you like these kinds of movies, I think it's a high-end version of it. I could have done, out, done without some of the gore, but, you know, it, it really played like a... 70s or 80s slasher movie. And um, that's what it was meant to be. So, it again, he doesn't try to be too clever. He doesn't try to explain, oh, well, the killer's really one of the crew or, you know, some big twist at the end. 
I like that. I hate when people try to do these big twists. And uh, sorry, my foot is is oh, I've got such a cramp in my foot. Um, you know, I hate when they try to do these big twists and then it just falls flat because they're just doing it to to add a twist. Whereas he didn't bother to add a twist, then the movie really didn't need one. It is what it is. You either like these kinds of slasher movies or you don't. So, uh, yeah, X. Eh, it's not bad. It's got boobies. Anyhow, that's it for me, Tony D. And Little Joan. Uh, check me out on the other sites because I'll be doing a review of Maxine. Maxine is the third in the trilogy. It's a direct sequel to this movie. So I'm going to do the review over there. So check out the green site. It rhymes with Bumble. Check out the black site, uh, which rhymes with Bodicey. And check out the orange site, which rhymes with Twit Blute, I'll say. And the links are below. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, check me out tomorrow at Level Up Entertainment in Hamilton Mall from 12 to 4. Happy Halloween, and we'll see you tomorrow.